hi everyone today we will learn about uh, two new post processor in jmeter one is debug post processor and another one is result status action handler so uh, for this first of all we will open the jmeter and uh, we will download a recording template from there Now I'll uh, open the application and uh, make proxy setting in that. So for that I need to check uh, what is the proxy setting in uh, Jmeter. So it's a port number double eight double eight. So we need to what we need to do is we need to make similar setting in our browser okay so we are searching for a uh, proxy setting in jmeter so that will go to lens setting over here check this proxy server setting address is localhost and port number is double eight double eight okay okay so uh, proxy setting is uh, done now we can start our recording so for that what we need to do is we can start our recording from here once this recording will start we will go through the application and it will record all these steps or actions which we will perform so now what we will do is recording is started from our side so let's go to browser and uh, see the application new tools dot demo aut dot com this is a sample application so this is a launch so let me rename the application as well at the same time launch the next one is login so now I'm trying to log into the application after this uh, let me give it a name as a, a login after that uh, let's say the same things are there I'm not changing anything over here I'm clicking on continue button continue okay Now again we are uh, not doing anything and simply click on continue button from this this screen as well. So uh, let's say we'll give it a name of uh, continue to and uh, after that uh, we'll fill this data. And uh, click on secure purchase button so booking is confirmed and we'll give it a name of booking confirmation booking confirmed now what I'm going to do is I'm changing those uh, proxy setting from the browser and uh, need to stop the recording from the geometry as well now I have uh, this recording available with me. Uh, now we need to check where we can use debug post processor and result status action handler and what is the purpose of these two post processor so let's say uh, first of all we will uh, 
okay so if i will add the post processor uh, first is debug post processor in this particular request and uh, the second one is uh, let's say over here under continue post processor is a uh, result status action handler okay so what this debug post processor means debug what uh, actually uh, debug post processor give us uh, properties and all those data in a return let's say we need to see, we want to see what is the data in the backend for this particular request so okay let me show you one thing first i'll show you with the help of example only uh, okay uh, let me replay this and then i'll show you what uh, what we will get from uh, this debug post processor after that uh, we'll move to result status action handler So application is a bit slow because it's a sample application. So it is taking a bit uh, longer time. But once uh, this uh, login uh, request or transaction is completed, then I will show you uh, what we will get from the debug post processor for login request. Yeah. It's still waiting for the response from the server. So let's see. How much time it will take for that it's still waiting for the response okay so here we got the response login request uh, this is the 23 request number so this is the request where you got the response and here if you can see the debug post processor it's displayed in the result and when we click on it what we will get we'll get its properties sampler properties we got okay so what all settings we have uh, marked sampler properties system property geometer variables and geometer properties okay all these four settings we have checked so first of all we'll get a uh, sampler property over here after that uh, sampler property means multiple post falls follow redirect true what all settings we have done in the sample uh, method post so if you want to see if you want to verify you can see it's a post request follow redirects true so all these settings are uh, there over here okay after that uh, keep alive true all these things are there let's move to second point for this that is geometer variables so what all variables are used in this request are displayed over here then third is geometer properties these are the geometer properties so you'll we'll see uh, we can see all the settings for geometer property over here okay debug sampler okay and uh, satisfied threshold tolerant threshold what all settings are there all are displayed uh, here under uh, debug post processor and the last one is a uh, system properties so we can see system properties here all these are the system properties it's something uh, to identify what is for use under this is a difficult task because uh, like uh, from this it's not easy to understand or we need to look like step by step for everything what is there but geometer provide us this feature to get every pro every data every property in the response only we don't need to go here and there to check and to verify all the data even uh, in this we can see like uh, what is the username password we have used for system this is not my application user and password this is my uh, this is like uh, so in this we can uh, 
uh, in this we can see all the username password everything is there related to system so this is a system property uh, the, uh, so this is all about debug post processor in this we can see jmeter properties jmeter variables sampler properties and system properties if we want uh, if we don't want uh, any specific property let's say we don't want system property and we want only jmeter properties jmeter variables and sample properties will mark it false and mark rest all three are true and we will get the corresponding properties from there and uh, after the second uh, post processor we selected we have selected is result status action handler so what is there in this particular uh, post processor so okay let's see action to be taken after a sampler error let's say with this particular request got fail so what we want to do after that do we want to continue or do we want to start a next thread or we want to stop the thread we want to stop the test or we want to stop the test now with the immediate effect let's say i am making some change in the request let's say uh, this is the request okay and uh, i have marked continue so let's see what will happen okay i am clearing this uh, result for now and uh, let's see what will happen now so uh, you can see the request is completed now so I'll show you two things in this particular response one is uh, if you remember we have marked the system properties as false so what we will see over here is okay we can see sampler property we can see geometry variables and uh, we can see geometry properties system properties will not be here you can see so this is one thing second is uh, on request number 28 okay it got failed because uh, we have passed the incorrect uh, URL and it's continue the application okay so what will happen in case we'll uh, select uh, start next thread loop and but for this what we need to do is we need to execute its two iteration then only it will be able to execute its next part so let me clear the results and uh, again uh, execute it okay, so in the meantime uh, <coughs> application is processing the request I'll explain the rest of the values so what uh, if we select the stop thread what it will do is it will uh, stop that particular thread we will get the fail response and uh, like let's say we have a uh, 10 users 10 threads are running and we got failure for three so three threads got stopped but uh, rest seven will still continue their work whatever assigned to them and if we select the stop test it will stop the test but whatever request threads are processing they will complete that particular request and after that they will stop the test and in case we will select the stop test now it will stop the test then and then only without waiting for anything they leave uh, all the threads leave the application immediately and in the start next thread loop let's say if we will let's see if we will get anything in the response but still it is processing so I think uh, we can do one thing we can stop it and uh, restart it might be there's something happen because of which bit there might be a case that something has happened to the application and it is showing a response very slow so when we replay the script again uh, we might get uh, the response a bit faster okay so I think uh, we can do one thing let me stop this test let me move this particular request from here to launch so that we can see the request response on time 
and uh, let's say I'm marking over here one and uh, selecting the same uh, radio button start next thread loop for two loop count for one thread let's see what happened If you see over here, the execution started, the first request go, it will fail and it will start the next iteration because we have marked over here two iterations for first thread and what we have selected over here, start next thread loop. So it has, uh, it will stop the, that particular loop or iteration which got failed and start the next loop so this is what all uh, these five radio button this is all about the uh, result status action handler uh, I have explained about the continue uh, functionality start next thread loop stop test stop thread stop test now all those things so now with this uh, we have completed this, uh, these two post processor as well debug post processor and result status action handler post processor. Now in my different different videos I have completed uh, mostly all the post processors. In my next video I will try to uh, display all the post processor in a single video so that you can learn everything about the post processor in a single video only. Thank you. Thank you everyone.